Hey minions, welcome to Crank It Up. I'm Jim Price and this is my Faction Factory video for the All-Stars. In this series, we play the role of a faction designer. Sometimes, I'll talk about what I would do with an existing faction, but this video is different, and it's not really about the All-Stars, I just wanted to avoid spoilers. This is about my All-Star team, the faction I designed a few months before the All-Stars were announced. Several years ago, when Cease and Desist was announced but not released, I was lying on my thinking couch, the most comfortable spot in my house, thinking about board game design, smash up, cease and desist, and what other IPs I would parody. It was then that I realized that two of my favorite things in life had similar names, and more importantly, both of them were about extreme combinations. So I decided that I needed to combine these two things together, and I created something I really loved, Super Smash Up Brothers a fan-made spin-off of Smash Up and Super Smash Bros., one of my favorite video games of all time. If you know the video game series, you know that there are a ton of characters. I started working on a core set, but I quickly remembered something. In Super Smash Bros., there was a fighting polygon team, which replicated the moves of all the characters. And so I thought, what if I made a fighting polygon team faction with repeats of other factions? Sort of like a best of faction. So a few months later, when the All-Star Factions was announced, I was shocked. I said to my friends, you've got to be kidding me. Of course, I don't own any rights to either property, and if there's one thing I've learned in my life, it's that time and time again, people are going to have ideas simultaneously, but whoever acts on them first is the one that history remembers. Crank It Up wasn't around back then, not even the board game Bandit, so alas, my fighting Polygon team is irrelevant and outdated. However. I made a key design decision that was different from the eventual All-Stars deck that I wanted to share with you all because I think it could have led to many All-Star decks. The All-Star deck features two cards of every set with no faction repeated, but this also means that not every faction is represented. And though I hate this rule, as a big baseball fan, I've grown up seeing every team represented at the All-Star game regardless of their worth. Because the truth is, if you look closely enough, there's always someone deserving, at least in baseball, but also probably in Smash Up. So for my fighting Polygon team, I focused exclusively on the core set. I said, what minion and what action best encapsulates what the faction does, and I built a team around it. Of course, there are only 8 factions, and with 2 cards each, that's only 16 cards, which is 4 short. But if you play Super Smash Bros., you'll remember Metal Mario, a new, non-playable character. So I rounded out the team with four original cards that offered a chance to do something new. One other change was that I renamed all the cards intentionally to avoid problems that arise with card duplicates. I have never enjoyed playing with faction duplicates and it can create some unexpected abilities as well as exploiting certain cards, so all cards were given new names. And because I'm a software engineer, I couldn't resist the opportunity for a smash up naming scheme. Apologies to anyone who won't understand the references, but the fighting Polygon team were all wireframe avatars, so computing was definitely a relevant theme, way better than Space Jam in my opinion. I'll leave the names in the description for anyone who's curious. When selecting cards, note that I'm focusing on encapsulating the spirit of the faction rather than grabbing the best card overall. I wanted to reflect the tier structure as much as possible, though this wasn't always possible. If you watched Monday's video, you've already figured out that King Rex was the obvious top tier choice. Its pure strength was the easy pick and really sums up the dinosaurs. For my tier 4 factions, note that I'm going by tier rather than printed power, because some minions were reduced in power as part of the original game balancing. So the Chrono Mage is my tier 4 minion because it represents the wizards well. I didn't want to include the Arch Mage and have two king minions represented. The other tier 4 minion, ironically 3 power, is the invader, which summarizes the alien endgame of VP accumulation. My tier 3 begins with Shinobi, one of my favorite minions in the game, who is perfectly versatile and definitely a reflection of the ninja strategy. The Tenacious Z also fills out the tier 3 slot despite the power reduction, even with only one of them in your deck, the Tenacious Z is extremely useful. One of the new minions will occupy the third spot, which I'll get to in a bit. For the lowest tier, the first mate is an obvious choice for representing the pirates. 
as it remains the epitome of most pirate strategies. Like the Tenacious Z, I'd be content with even one copy of this card. Zapbot has to be the robot choice for practical reasons, as a single microbot would be meaningless. While the Hoverbot could have been a backup choice, I like Zapbot at the number 2 slot. Admittedly, I'm not crazy about the Gremlin in the number 2 slot, but Leprechaun is too strong for a second King minion, and I think the Gremlin better represents the Tricksters over Gnome. So for minions, I have one tier 2 and one tier 3 spot for original minions. At the time, Matrix of Bossiness had just been previewed, and I was excited because the game hasn't done enough with printed power. The Mimic was one of my favorite minions because it exploited printed power, so I created the Smart Pointer, a zero printed power minion who had plus one power for each minion in play with a different printed power, including itself. This would have been perfect with Zapbot, who can play the minion with ultimately higher power. I also wanted to create an anti-shinobi, so I created the Load Balancer, which had a special ability, any time an opponent plays a minion of power 3 this turn, you may play this minion there as well. Again playing with the idea of the printed power concept. You make a move, I make a move, and we are at the same power distribution as before. With the actions, I had to choose between looking exclusively at the actions that appear twice versus actions that really stand out in the deck. I decided to focus on the latter because for actions not designed to work with each other necessarily, I wanted to maximize the effect of an action each turn. The only exceptions were Tech Center, where I obviously didn't have a choice, and Beam Up, because I was worried that Abduction would be too powerful. I had the same problem with Zombies, as their coming to get you would have been too strong with everything else, so this was nerfed to They Keep Coming. I would have liked not enough bullets, but it definitely doesn't synergize with unique minions. Rampage was my easy choice for dinosaurs because breakpoint damage is much more rare than extreme power boosts. For the pirates, I chose full sail because of its versatility and being a stronger form of dinghy. I wanted to represent the pirate movement more because that is their strategy. I see their destruction as a stall tactic to allow their movement combos to occur. Take the shinies works best for the tricksters in a vacuum, as does scry for the wizards. For the ninjas, I wanted to feature their destruction since sneakiness was already covered in the shinobi. I felt assassination was better than seeing stars, which ended up being picked in the all-star deck anyway. For my custom choices, I again wanted to play with printed power one more time, and I needed to get a 1 onto the board. So I created copy and paste error, which could be played on a minion with power 3 or less. You would treat this minion's printed power as if it were 1. I wanted the negative version of Matrix of Bossiness without it being overpowered. It was a strategic form of grumpiness. For the final action, I just wanted a really versatile, easy to use card, and I was surprised that there was no card that simply said draw 3 cards, so I created one in Stack Overflow. It would be a long time before Tribute showed up and became the first card to do that. And just like that, my fighting polygon team was complete, a sort of carbon copy of the core set. I never got around to finalizing bases for this particular faction because the idea of repeating a base seemed wrong. Bases often seem similar, but they are usually different in one key way, and I didn't know how to handle this with a fighting polygon team. In Super Smash Bros., when you get knocked off the side, you lose a life, and so I wanted to do something where if a minion was moved off a base, it was destroyed. But this is too powerful with a base like Mushroom Kingdom in play, and the Fighting Polygon team had no way to facilitate that movement except on themselves. The Fighting Polygon team was also known for team-ups, so I thought about extra minion plays because you're usually fighting three at a time, but I was concerned about power creep and I meant to come back to this later, but I never did. But the reason I liked my Fighting Polygon team was that it provided a template that could be used to make a new one every eight factions, or roughly every two expansions. Granted, this could have been problematic with Innsmouth, whose minion would be useless, but this was for fun so I could have done anything I wanted. Over time, we could have had several all-star decks and would have added a lot of anticipation to the game as people wondered which representatives would be picked for the next faction. As much as I've learned that good ideas are rarely yours alone, I remember feeling disappointed when the all-stars were announced, but since then, it's been encouraging to see that at least one of my custom-made factions was close enough to an idea that Paul made himself. This helps me know that Smash Up still has plenty of territory to uncover because I have plenty of ideas left myself. 
I've been meaning to make actual card images for the longest time, but life gets busy. You know how it is. If anyone wants to help with this project, I would love to collaborate with you, so let me know. So that's my fighting Polygon team and the lessons I learned while making the faction. In Super Smash Bros. alone, I have seven more factions created that I'll release periodically, hoping to get through them all. This series in particular is really meant to be about the fans and their choices for the game, so if you made factions yourselves, or if you want to talk about a faction that you wished went in a different direction, let us know and we'd love to feature you on the channel. Thanks for watching, be sure to like and subscribe, let's shut it down.